Colonel, I implore you. We must destroy that tower. Sergeant, that tower is one of the oldest and most treasured of all the historically important structures still standing. And I'm not going to be the son of a bitch responsible for turning a thousand years of history into dust. The tower stands! Hello, YouTube, and hello, Ninth Age community. This is Charles with Evershade Gaming, and I'm bringing you another Ninth Age Battle Report. Just attended Siege of the Tower last weekend. It was a great tournament. I played my Empire Sunstall army. And I'm just going to get right into it. Um, I want to show you the list that I played. I took uh, something a little bit... I, I kind of been playing with something for the last like you know a few weeks, but then I changed my mind in the last minute, and I uh, actually was really happy with it. So I, I have a Cosmology Wizard. He's got the Talisman of Void, because I love that extra channel, and the Scepter of Power. Then I've got a Marshal with the Death Warrant Black Steel. Battle Standard, he's got a Shield and Pistol. It's like, that's my normal build at this point. Got a prelate, he's got the Imperial Seal, the Mantle Ular, and the Locket of Suna with plate armor and a great weapon, and he's my general. Then in the core, I've got 10 militia with bows and skirmish, 5 cav with shields and musician, 22 heavy infantry with halberds, full command, and the banner of Relentless Company, uh, 14 light infantry with crossbows, 20 light infantry with handguns, musician, standard bearer, marksman pendant. 30 Imperial Guard with Grey Weapons, uh, Full Command in the Banner of Speed, 4 Knights of the Sun Griffin uh, with a Champion and a Musician, and then an Arcane Engine of Foreseeing, a Steam Tank, a Cannon, and a Mortar. So, uh, yeah, I, I really wanted to try playing with uh, Imperial Greatswords. It's something I haven't really taken to a tournament in ages, um, and I thought this combination was worked, so um, I liked it. So yeah, I took great swords, and it was really fun, actually. In the first round, I played against Lenny the Tyrant, and he was taking Sarn Ancients, so he's got a Katol Lord uh, with a bunch of great stuff. He's basically got plus two to cast, he's got Essence of Free Mind, he can use Pyromancy or Alchemy, he's a BSB, he's a, he's a tough dude. Uh, and then he has two uh, Sorin Veteran Cowboys, they're both in Raptors, uh, they, both lead, they both have one up, One's got a 4th region, one's got a 5 up ward save, and they both got raid weapons, so they're pretty tough close combat. Uh, and then he's got 16 warriors and musician, that's where his Katol Lord goes. 20 skink braves and poison javelins, just like semi-chaff, semi-shooting. 2 spearbacks, 2 salamanders, uh, 3 things of 5 raptors of musician, and then 2 stitiosaurs. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of like a lot of, a lot of scoring, a lot of fast scoring. Couple kind of like you know, Stegosaurus are nice, like kind of like small monsters. Uh, you know, they're not very expensive. Katol Lord obviously has to do a lot of work. Um, they've got that great trait spell in Sword Ancients that's like D6 strength five hits. So either lore he takes, he's got a lot of damage output. So uh, it's a good list. Um, so yeah, let's look at deployment. The first scenario at every Siege of the Tower, or I don't know every, but for the last few five years. Um, the river, um, there's a river on the side of the board, and whoever has the most amount of scoring units uh, next to that river um, wins, like, an obje like, objective on, on any even point. Uh, you basically tally up who's who has had control of the river most of the game, that person wins the objective now. Um, so yeah, you just gotta stack your scoring units basically within 30 inches of the river. So that's why uh, when we look at our uh, deployments, uh, you're gonna see everything's kind of bunched together. So yeah, looking at the Saurian deployment. Looking at the Saurian deployment, uh, he's got 20 of his Skink Braves on his left, and he's got his Katol Lord with his Warriors on the hill. Uh, his two Spearbacks in front of them, uh, one of his uh, five Riders with one of his Cowboys in that unit too, and then he's got a Stygiosaur next to those uh, Riders. He's got both Salamanders behind the Stygiosaurus, kind of protecting him from fire right now. Uh, and then another Stygiosaur, so both, both Stygies are right next to each other. And then he's got another unit of his five Raptor Riders uh, hunkering down next to the river with another one of his Cowboys. And then on the far side of his board, he's got one unit of Raptor Riders uh, kind of just chilling. Uh, and then another, another part of the first uh, scenario for Siege of Towers, we have to hold one of our core units in reserve, and they come on as ambushers. I held my archers in reserve because they're not scoring, so I was like, uh, it wasn't many scoring units. I had more scoring units than him, so uh, I held them in reserve. He had to hold one of his key braves in reserve. 
which uh, really kind of I, it was pretty rough around. So this is my deployment, but uh, let's kind of zoom in to kind of get some more better looks at it. So uh, uh, starting on my right, I've got 20 heavy infantry right next to the river, just kind of hunkering down as far as possible. I was worried about his ambusher coming on too, so I wanted to protect that corner. Because the ambushers have to come on actually next to the river too. That's another big part. I've got my steam tank on the hill. I've got my nice and sun griffin on the hill. I've got my arcane engine uh, in the back. Now, uh, then I've got my big unit imperial guard right in the middle. Cannon next to them. Uh, unit of five knights. Uh, and all this is within 30 inches. So like you know, I've got like one, two, three, four, five scoring units right there, all within 30 inches. And then the first thing I dropped actually was my. Uh, my light infantry with hand gunners, and I didn't measure them, but you know, I must have just known, and I stuck them within just within 30 inches. Basically, those three guys are within 30 inches, so they are also within the the scoring point. Uh, and then I put the crossbows uh, on the side. I didn't know, I didn't really want to put them on the far left to fight those certain guys, but I wanted to have them close if I wanted to be pull them in. So they're right there. Uh, and then this is just where my characters are: Marshall. Or Marshall and Prelate next to each other, Causal Wizard on the other side. Let's look at Sorting Ages turn one. Uh, I know he, I know we dropped a couple drops, uh, traded, you know, couple, traded a couple drops, um, and then I think he plopped at one point uh, to get turn one, uh, which I was okay with. So he moves both his cowboys up into that unit uh, of riders in the front there, uh, not too far from my Knights of Sun Griffin, um, and then he just kind of moves up his uh, controller to get in range. The Skinks can't get in range, so. He's holding his weapon beast back. Uh, he moves that. I thought he was going to go after my uh, cr uh, my hand gunners, but he's actually going to try and get that mortar, which I put my mortar way over there just because I was like, eh, whatever. I didn't want to stack too many things on one side. Uh, between shooting and, or between magic, really, he just he does two wounds to one of the Knights of Summer. In US uh, turn one, I give my light infantry ready aim fire uh, so that they, uh, or so they're accurate, which is awesome. And then I charge my Knights of Sun Griffin into his uh, two cowboys and his five dudes. I'm kind of hoping I can just plow through the normal dudes, uh, break my combat rest. That was my hope. Move my steam tank up. Move my uh, move my Imperial Guard up. Kind of turn my knights around, and then I just start moving my crossbow un unit uh, back towards the river, so they're scoring. Uh, yeah, but I, I really like. Uh, I'm really hopeful for those Knights of Sun Griffin. I really like uh, what position I'm in. Uh, you know, I feel like there's nothing in this his list that can really threaten my Imperial Guard too much. Uh, other, uh, unless I really let them get bogged down by a lot of units. But you know, between shooting and magic, I am hoping and I should be able to you know pick off some of the smaller parts of his army and then really isolate you know the other units. Uh, my first Flux card that I draw, I draw an eight, which is great because I got. Bunch of dice and a bunch of veil tokens, and I generate four veil tokens from my army, so I had probably ten dice. Uh, I cast Altered Sight on his dudes to reduce their uh, offensive and defensive skill, uh, which makes his cowboys hit me on fours. Uh, and then I also casted Ice and Fire at his one of his salman or yeah, one of his salamanders. I killed it, and I panicked one of the stygies. Uh, he actually, he, he was really upset. He he moved his katol to the other side of his Sauron Ancients to get better. Uh, views for his spells, uh, but then he put him too far to range for leadership. Uh, one of the cannons open up does four wounds to the other stigy or to one of the stigies. Um And then the mortar hits does a few wounds to those geek braves. And then in combat, this was big. Um, yeah, go in, uh, wipe his Saurus Cav. That was awesome. I'm coming in on dash five, which is great. And then he goes, he actually does quite a bit of damage to me. Um, he only had eight, I mean, he's got eight sacks from his two cowboys. He hits like five times, and I think he does five wounds, and I think I only make, what, one save or something like that. Um, so he kills, um, so I've got three wounds on one, one wound on another dude. Uh, his, his, uh, his other dudes don't do wounds. And the same problem happened where his control lord was on the wrong side, and he didn't pass his break test. I didn't catch him, thankfully I didn't catch him, because otherwise that probably would have been game over right there. Um, and they rally on his next turn, but it definitely puts him at a distinct disadvantage. Another big thing is that Stygy that ran, ran off the board too, so he, it was a big swing right there on, uh, turn one, turn two. Uh, he also, he keeps, keeps moving his, uh, Saurus Cab up, he's gonna get that mortar eventually, there's nothing he can do about it. Um, and then he moves, a lot of his shooting to target the Knights of Sun Griffin, he's, at this point it's, you know, they're in the way and they need to, he needs to get rid of them. 
Um, and he was also moving those King Braves up. You know, they're going to try and threaten my, uh, my cannon and my light infantry. Nothing I can really do about that either. Um, I shot at them last turn with my handguns, but they, they did some damage, but they couldn't make them panic. The slums, the controller is too close. Uh, I can't worry with this shooting or magic, but he does a few wounds in my cannon. And then between shooting or magic, he finishes off the cannon. Uh, I pass all my panic checks, which is great. Uh, so nobody flees, nobody has a problem. I got my leadership right there. Um, and then his Stidiosaur actually does his toxic breath weapon and kills the rest of the Night Sun Griffin, which is really good. Because I think he only got like seven hits and he just rolled a bunch of fives and sixes. But that's okay, because they were going to get shot to death anyway. Uh, I give on the double to my Imperial Guard at uh, my turn two. Uh, and then I move them up, move the Steam Tank. I actually don't think the Steam Tank moves. I think you can see that Stidgy. It's just going to try and shoot that guy. And uh, now those crossbows are in my deployment or in the within thirty inches, so they're uh, I'm pretty much been I've pretty much been winning the river every round. Uh, I get a flux card six, which is a good good flux card again. Uh, I probably had nine dice, two extra real tokens. Cast altered sight on my uh, uh, steam tank. I really want to just finish off that stigy. Um, I put an I throw an ice and fire at uh, one of the salamanders. I uh, can't quite kill it, unfortunately. Uh, but then the archers came on, and they came on perfectly to block those two cowboys. And since skirmishers can shoot 360, they do the one wound on that guy. That's probably one of the best things I've actually seen one of my archers ever do. And then my steam tank kills the studio sword. So it was a really good shooting and magic phase. Um, you know, just got rid of a lot of bunch of stuff. Um, the big thing happens in turn three is uh, I can't stop a... Uh, um, I always want to say Searing Doom. Quick Silver Lash, and he does a few wins to the Steam Tank. Searing Doom was just such a great name. Uh, this was terrible. Uh, his Salamander misfires, takes a wound. <laughs> That's, I mean, it was like perfect range to do a bunch of damage to his Imperial Guard, and of course, that little guy messes up. Uh, his, his Raptor Riders have killed the Mortar by this point, uh, and this was just a good shot to kind of show you what was his, what his, uh, everything looked like on his turn three. Uh, my turn three, I charge my Knights into his Skink Braves. They charged last turn, but he fled, and now they're getting back in there. Uh, and then I have to charge the Salamander, just gotta get rid of, you know, it's just chaffing me up now at this point. So, uh, I cast Altered Sight on my Steam Tank again. Um, kind of sometimes I'm just casting some Cosmo spells to get other Cosmo spells off. Um, uh, I get Unity Divergence off on my uh, crossbowman for the five wards. Save. I was a little bit worried about. He's got a unit of raptor riders really close. I was worried about them charging in. Um, I win combat here, but these guys stick on a reroll, and I kill the salamander. So unfortunately, those knights are about to get flank charged by that source cab right there, and they do get flank charged. So and that was yeah. I was worried about these four source uh, source cab charging into my light infantry because even with like just four, if I five go in there and I can't do a wound. He'll probably break me. I mean, he will break me because I'm actually a forest. Yep. Uh, and then in his turn, he's able to kill the steam tank. Uh, I mean, he's got all his alchemy spells, so it's it's not too hard for him to put wounds on it. Uh, and then in combat, he's no problem just kind of pushing over those uh, those five guys. Uh, they I don't know if they kill them all, but I know they keep, uh, pursue and catch them. Uh, and then on my turn four, I, I actually, with my light infantry, I just shoot the rest of that source cab unit off the board. Um, I cast a Unity Divergence on my Imperial Guard because I charged one of his cowboys that's chaffing me. And then in combat, I get in a challenge with my Prelate because my Prelate's got the Lager Suna and he's got great uh, stats to swap. Um, and I think I, yeah, I even go first because even though he's got a lower initiative, he's got a great weapon. And he, uh, I do... I get four hits, or I get three hits, three wounds. I'm at like I'm at like strength seven with him, and then he makes two of his armor saves. He's like on a, it's like a five up armor save. He makes two armor saves. That one's got the lucky charms. The one with the one up five up. He makes he makes the other armor save the reroll. He strikes back with his two attacks. He rolls a four and a one. He rules the one because a predatory fighter. He hits with it. He does two wounds. Uh, with like strikes against against my T5 now, it's my resilience five, and then I fail both armor saves, fail both ward saves. So unfortunately, I go in um, and I've got a charge, a banner, a BSB, no wounds to his two wounds. He's only down by one, and then since I'm in line formation, I don't get the rest of my uh, you know ranks. 
So he sticks. So I reform, and uh, I'm giving him my flank because he's got another unit of source where he's really close. So that was a little bit disappointing. Um, <laughs> with the prelate. With the, he just rolled really well. He just rolled better than me. And then in the next turn, on his turn five, uh, we're still in the challenge, and he... I want to say I rolled the same way, but he only, and then he, he didn't, he didn't pass his my armor saves, and I got the Biden attack, so his ward saves, you know, is almost nothing, um, and he takes two wounds, and then the same thing happens, where he rolls like a four to one, he re-rolls, and he has two wounds, and I can't make any armor saves, I got a four up armor save, and a five up ward save, and I failed both, and my prelate dies, unfortunately. So, the only good thing is I, I went wider, so I do have ranks, so I pursue him down, and I catch him. That's the only good thing that happens out of that. Uh, his uh, source cab pretty much just get off, move on it. I'll go off the hill. I've been shooting him at them with the cannon and the crossbows. But I can't do any wounds. Panic them. Uh, on my turn five, um, I kind of just turn to face the. At this point, I just want to try and get as much points as possible. So his his ambushers didn't finally come on until his turn four. It's, I just know it's turn five. So they finally come on turn five. And unfortunately, they're in a great position to kind of pick on the arcane engine with their poison shots. So I believe I turned my wizard, my, or my whole unit, to basically kind of uh, take them off board. I don't get really get a great magic phase pull with one card. Um, I can't get them off. Um, on his turn six, he's able to kill my arcane engine, which is a bummer. Um, he's just moving one of his Katol. He's missing his Katol and one of his Thorn veterans is far away from the Imperial Guard. And uh, basically, turn six, all I do is charge. Um, I give myself the on the double order to bump and move it up, and I charge the uh, charge the um, with those king braves, and I catch them. And that's pretty much where the game ends. Uh, you know, I've got and I finished off that other unit's king braves with my light infantry. Um, but at that point, I really couldn't do much more to. Uh, I, I, I mean. To panic that, like, total unit off would have been insane. Um, I don't even think I had range. So, yeah, this is where the game ends. Uh, this was a fun game, actually. Um, got some really good luck at the beginning of the game. Uh, Len even agreed. Or Len was kind of kicking himself. He felt that he made a couple mistakes with this, like, placing his Katol Lord. Um, and that did, I mean, I mean, it was minor, too, because it was like, I mean, he, st he didn't He didn't even lose combat by that much um, that first turn those nights. Sunder. He really lost by one. Um, so it was only a leadership seven cold blooded test. He just couldn't pass it though. Um, so yeah, uh, it was uh, a decent win for me round one at Siege of the Tower. Uh, the point difference is about two thousand two thousand four hundred and twenty one, um, which is significant. Um, a significant point difference. And then I handedly won the objective um, just because I I just you know um, I think the really big thing that hit him is. He had to hold one of his score units uh, uh, on res in reserve, and then um, I just stacked everything on that side. And then I, he probably, I guess if he had that one unit of uh, source over there, he would have tied it a couple rounds. But I think I still would have won because it just took so long for those skink braves to come on. Yeah, so I got a 14-6 uh, round one. Very happy about that. I want to thank everybody for watching, and I will have more Sieges of the Tower battle reports up very soon. Have a great week.